I chain smoke and I say fuck a lot. But I accept myself for the way I am. I accept you too. Viewer discretion advised. First off, I want to thank an open secret for sharing this clip. Who do I look like? Little Ricky Schroeder, I think. Oh, yeah, uh, Ricky Schroeder. This one. Yeah. Then we can. Young, young River River Phoenix. Phoenix. Stardom started early for Leonardo. By the time he was hired at 16 to star with TV's biggest teen star, Kirk Cameron, on the hit show Growing Pains in 1991, he'd already been acting for more than 10 years. He starred in commercials and the kids' show Romper Room before landing on the sitcom. And he was an on the set cut up from the start. I know what? we can show him what? our little drawings. Show us the little drawings. Oh, the you little see drawings. him? We draw drawings of each other. Brian is the famous artist, and we always make fun of each other and portray each other in silly, satirical ways. Leo's job on this set, for some reason, is to make fun of me all day long. Okay, so here we have Robert De Niro, right there. See Robert? Disney ABC hired a convicted child rapist within a year after he was released from prison for uh, raping a 15-year-old Nickel, Nickelodeon actor. And I thought for sure this was a hoax. I said, come on. But I decided to research it. And here's what I found. Okay, so here's this scumbag Brian Peck. Uh, he's, he's best known for Return of the Living Dead and X-Men Part 2. And in 2001, he was working on two different Nickelodeon shows. One of them was called The Amanda Show. And the other one was called All That. Now, while he was working for Nickelodeon, he was taking a 15-year-old Nickelodeon star, a boy, back to his house for... Uh, allegedly acting lessons and then the boy told his parents what was really going on his parents called the police he was charged with 11 different crimes they included lewd act upon a child sodomy of a person under 16 attempted sodomy of a person under 16 sexual penetration by foreign object four counts of oral copulation of a person under 16 oral copulation by anesthesia or controlled substance sending harmful matter and using a minor for sex acts so that was 2001 then in 2004, he agreed to a plea bargain and was convicted of a lewd act against a child of age 15 and oral copulation with a person aged 15. Uh, he was ordered to serve 16 months in prison. I'm not sure exactly how many months he actually served, but within a very, very short amount of time, in 2006, ABC Disney hires him to work on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, a children's show starring young boys. You can see right here, he's listed in the credits for three different episodes. So Brian Peck worked on Growing Pains with Leonardo DiCaprio. Well, you know who else worked on Growing Pains? Producer Steve Marshall. Little Rock, Arkansas, an executive producer for the 1980s sitcom Growing Pains, has been sentenced in Arkansas to seven and a half years in prison for distribution of child pornography. Stephen Marshall was arrested last April 15th on charges of distribution and possession of child pornography. Marshall pleaded guilty to distribution and the possession charge was dropped. Authorities say he engaged in sending and receiving child pornography and participated in online chats detailing child abduction, bondage, rapes, and murders. U.S. District Judge J. Leon Holmes said Tuesday that Marshall's sentence exceeded the five-year minimum for distribution because of the nature of the pictures and language used in the chat rooms. Brian Peck worked on Growing Pains with Stephen Marshall and Just the Ten of Us with Stephen Marshall. Leonardo Wilhelm DiCaprio was destined to be a spirited boy. He received his first name after swiftly kicking his mother from her womb as she admired a Leonardo da Vinci painting. Born in Los Angeles on November 11, 1974, Leonardo was the only child of George and Ermeline DiCaprio, who divorced when he was just a year old. Leo was like, says he was raised in Compton. He likes to make us think that he's straight out of Compton. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, pale as a dead fish belly and blonde hair is straight out of Compton. <laughs> he didn't grow up in Compton, but he did grow up in Hollywood. And he admits he wasn't much of a student, preferring to entertain his classmates rather than do his homework. I, uh, I was sort of a class clown. And my publicist is looking at me. Publicist? 
He's talking about Bob Villard. That was his publicist. Wednesday, March 2nd, 2005, acting coach arrested for child molestation. On March 2nd, 2005, detectives arrested 57-year-old Robert David Villard, a talent manager and acting coach for young aspiring actors. The arrest took place without incident at the Van Nuys police station. Villard was arrested on a felony warrant, charging him with nine counts of violating Penal Code 288A lewd acts with a child under 14. The LAPD Sexually Exploited Child Unit Juvenile Division is handling the current investigation. That began in September 2004 when a 17-year-old boy reported that Villard had molested him when the boy was 13 years old. The investigation culminated in today's arrest. Not too long ago, I put out a video called P is for Pervert. And in the video, I use a couple blind items. One of the blind items is called P's Friends, and it implies Bob Villard. And another friend that we can connect, Marty Weiss. June 1st, 2012, youth talent manager Martin Weiss pleads no contest, sentenced in molestation case. Marty Weiss is the Hollywood talent manager whose company rep child actors that had landed roles on such series as Nickelodeon's iCarly, and Disney's Good Luck Charlie, as well as network shows and movies. He pleaded no contest during a pre-trial hearing to two charges of oral copulation with a child under the age of 14. He was sentenced to a year in jail and five years probation. The sentence was suspended for time served and he will be released today. Leo, as you know, is the latest, hottest, hunkiest teen idol there is. Yeah, his muscles. Look, speaking of hunky, huh? Okay. Leo, what's it like to be a teen idol? Uh, ask her Cameron. Uh, I don't... <laughs> well, I see my pictures there, and it's fun seeing those, and, uh, I haven't really got the full impact of it yet, so... I don't know about that teen thing. I mean, I think it's good. I think it's good for publicity, but they don't... It, it's almost like they're not actors, you know what I mean? It's like they portray them as, like, sort of a piece of meat. <laughs> like, you know, here's the new cute thing. Take a look at him and go, ooh, ah. From the LA Times, June 23rd, 2002, groomed to be all that. At Disney and Nick, youngsters are carefully scouted and prepped for stardom. They even take classes on how to deal with fans. For Lisa Foyles, a dance recital isn't just a dance recital anymore. While waiting for her cue in the wings of a hall near her Riverside home one recent evening, the freckled 15-year-old was taken by surprise. Lisa is a product of one of the television's two big child star factories, Nickelodeon and Disney Channel, which supply a major share of programming for the up to 12 demographic, also nurture, package, and deliver young stars to your home in a process that hums with efficiency. And also, Lisa has not only taken countless hours of singing, dancing, and acting lessons, She's even taken a course on how to be a child star, a series of workshops and classes on how to act professionally, deal with production crews, talk to the press and handle crowds of her eager young fans when she's spotted in public. Lisa's big break came a year ago from writer-producer Dan Schneider. Round-faced and multi-talented, he broke in as a teen actor in the 1986 ABC series Head of the Class. Schneider was picking a new cast for season 7 of All That. The show which he co-created has become something of a talent incubator at Nickelodeon, making stars out of Amanda Bynes, Keenan, and Kel, among others. The new cast started with a two-week comedy boot camp that Schneider held with help of a team that included the show's dialogue coach, Brian Peck. Lisa has tremendous enthusiasm. She's a natural, said Peck who is also an actor and voiceover artist. So this connects Brian Peck to Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon. Pickle boy. He hates pickles. Pickle boy. His pickles taste bad. Pickle boy likes to hurt and tease pickles. Pickle Boy, the best pickle boy in the world. I think it's safe to say that something's been going on at Nickelodeon with the recent termination of Dan Schneider, who has been there for many years, and then following a few months later, the resignation of Sama Zargami 
I don't know if that's how you say it. I've never even heard of her before. But something's definitely been going on. And something's changing. He also worked on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, which was a Disney show. X-Men and X-Men 2, or X2, directed by Brian Singer, which is also a connection to Mark Collins' Rector and the Den organization. Mark Collins' Rector was convicted three counts of transportation of a minor with intent to engage in sexual activities. Brian Peck worked on anger management as a dialogue coach, and that is a connection with Charlie Sheen. But not only Charlie Sheen, it's also a connection to the subject of my other video, P is for Pervert, Jeff Ballard, who was also an executive producer of Anger Management. And in my other video, one of the blind items, P's friends, refers to allegedly Bob Villard and Marty Weiss. And if we want to take a full circle, Jeff Ballard was Kirk Cameron's PR on Growing Pains. <laughs> Fucking stoned. <laughs>